we had in the past spoken on different roles played by animals in war. These included how they were used for espionage, inspired design of advanced weaponry and how they physically participated in wars. Today, we would speak on how animals contributed in war passively. Yes, you heard me right. These animals did not do anything actively but contributed immensely to war just by remaining themselves. Hi, I am Basak from Savana Safari. That's S-A-V-A-N-A -A -A Safari. As a wildlife enthusiast, I speak and write on the wonders of Mother Nature. And I specifically undertake customized adventure tours to Kenya and Tanzania. Morale, as we all know, depends on one's mental health. Napoleon, the famous French conqueror, said that the morale of an army is worth more than its size, its training and even experience. Mascots played a very important role in maintaining morale of an army. The mascot lends a sense of belonging to a unit soldiers and keeps them mentally happy. They would proudly include their mascot in group photos, take care of the animal and often lovingly spoil it. A playful monkey was the proud mascot of 3rd Army Trench Mortar School, UK, while a curly cat played the role of mascot of HMS Dreadnought, and a cute fox cub represented number 32 squadron of the British Army. A South African Army unit even had a baboon as the mascot, while Royal HMS Royal Oak had a bear as theirs. Kangaroos and their babies were carried all the way to various parts of the world to units and field hospitals where Australian soldiers were fighting. The purpose was to lift the morale of the soldiers. The kangaroos would become companion of the injured soldiers and the soldiers would also take care of them, pad them and since it reminded them of their home, they would feel happy in those difficult times. In World War I, after every battle, the no man's land would be full of dead animals and soldiers. The place would soon be overrun by rats who would feed on them. Later on, the rats would invade the trenches where they would either finish the precious ration of or bite into the wounds of sleeping soldiers. To counter this menace of rats, armies started enlisting cats for their natural tendency to kill rats. Every army started to maintain thousands of cats in the war front. While the cats had a ball over time chasing rats all day, the soldiers slept in peace with a full belly. As if to compete with the good work being done by the kangaroos, a small 18-inch Yorkshire Terrier named Smokey became world's first therapy dog just by being her cute, naughty self and visiting American soldiers during World War II. She visited injured soldiers in field hospitals and entertained them with her antics. Doctors marveled how well their patients responded to treatments post Smokey's visit and soon field hospitals started eagerly looking forward to her visits. She had such a healing effect on injured soldiers that Animal Planet acknowledged her as the first ever therapy dog on record. Gerbils and hamsters have a strong sense of smell and they have often been used in critical locations where they may be attempt of sabotage or sudden attack by single individual. 
the supporters or attackers commitment on completing their mission creates stress in their body which then secretes lot of adrenaline before these missions the heightened level of adrenaline in these people is detected by the strong sense of smell of the gerbils who suddenly show signs of disturbed movement this sudden disturbance of the gerbils enables the guards to identify and nab the person having heightened adrenaline secretion worms of various nature have contributed significantly in war though passively like the quadrupeds above the female glow worm lampyris noctiluca emits light at night to attract unsuspecting insect prey during world war 1 allied soldiers fighting in the trenches would gather these bioluminescent insects and store them in glass bottle at night when they needed light inside the trench they could not use artificial illumination since it would reveal their location and attract enemy fire the soldiers bottle of light emitting glow worms would then help them see in the dark without being seen by the enemy like the glow worm another worm the silk worm unknowingly played an important role in world war 2 both the allied and the germans needed parachutes either to drop their agents or their soldiers parachutes at that point of time used to be made of woven silk thus overnight silk worms became extremely sought after in all these countries germany went a step ahead and made silk worm breeding a part of school curriculum and school teachers were specially trained to weave silk out of silk worm during world war 1 the germans started chemical warfare by using mustard gas mustard gas produces hydrochloric acid on coming in contact with moisture that is the moisture of air severe respiratory problem would start amongst the affected and their lungs would get corroded some 90000 soldiers died out of these attacks and several thousands more were incapacitated the americans were at a loss as this gas was undetectable till it had actually reached and started affecting the soldiers at this point of time a zoologist of national museum of natural history usa suggested using garden slugs in the war front for detecting mustard gas surprisingly the slugs could sense mustard gas much before it reached the soldiers and would indicate it by abruptly contracting their body on seeing this change the soldiers could immediately put on their gas mask and save themselves it is said that these otherwise insignificant garden pests ended up saving lives of thousands of american soldiers the contribution of all these worms of various nature was so great that in november 2004 queen elizabeth's daughter princess anne unveiled a memorial park in london dedicated to all insects and animals who served in world war when i think of all these animals and insects who made significant contribution in wars but did so without doing anything i am reminded of the famous poem on his blindness by john milton wherein he said they also serve who only stand and wait when he wrote it in 1651 little did he know that 250 years later a motley group of animals would prove him right in the war front and 350 years later you and me would remember his immortal lines so please like share and subscribe to my channel and join me in this amazing journey where i bring you face to face with the cradle of civilization savanna safari 
your tryst with adventure.